Here we are in Kingston again, March 28th. Been warmer recently, not today so much. And uh, it's been a busy period. So I won't hold you up getting into the report for this period. Just two weeks on from the last update, there are major developments. At the East End, the first steel sections from Walters and Hamilton have begun to be installed. These massive steel structures, each weighing well over 20 tonnes, will form the framework for the arched bridge over the navigation channel. They arrived from Walters Steel in Hamilton, conveyed by Empire Transportation of Crosby, along Highway 15. Empire specialises in moving oversize and overweight loads. There's a link to their website in the description below. Stored on their trailers in the east side compound on Gore Road, they're moved onto the causeway within days, where the third LR1300 crane on site lifts them into position. The lift is a tricky one, involving turning round most pieces to be lowered into position. Highly skilled iron workers then secure the sections. They rest, temporarily, on structures atop piles driven into the riverbed. Preparatory work on these rests demands some welding and the occasional final adjustment with a 10 pound persuader. Because the work is performed out over the water, a safety boat is always present when team members are engaged in construction. As this period ends, four large sections can be seen in place but these comprise eight enormous steel pieces. There are already more on site awaiting installation and deliveries from Hamilton are expected to be a regular occurrence now. By the time the bridge is complete, there will be 3,300 tonnes of steel in the structure and 31,000 tonnes of concrete. It's easy to describe the installation process but a picture is worth a thousand words. So we'll see how some of the first pieces were placed. Once the sections are moved onto the causeway, the next step, undertaken very carefully, is to place the lift lines that run to the crane. Once final checks are complete, the process of taking up the slack, checking balance, which has been carefully calculated in advance, and starting the main lift has begun. Surprisingly quickly, within about 30 to 45 minutes, each section can be lifted into place. It's not a simple task. Sections often have to be turned around in the air and the need for precision means that the skill level demanded of the crane operator is considerable. Once sections are finally in place, inevitably there are pins and locks to be placed and temporary bracing lines are tensioned to ensure stability. Over the last two weeks, the progress with the steel assembly has been rapid, leading to results like this that really show how the bridge is taking shape. On the west end, deliveries of concrete girders from De Cast, four and a half hours drive away, continue to impress anyone at the junction of Sir John A and John Counter, as Mike and Jim take the final turn towards the construction site. And since we're there, there's been a lot of interest in the way that these trucks negotiate that turn, and the rear six axle dollies that steer around it independently. Here's a look at the way this actually happens. And these images, from Paul Wash, show the detail of the movement of the three rear axles and the construction of the dolly. Paul has been capturing images of the project since the start, and you'll find a link to his web page below. Turning back to girders, 28 of the 95 expected are now in place, stretching more than a quarter of the way out along the bridge. Just this week, in a surprising turn of events, a major achievement was made in placing the first girders that will meet the roadway coming from Montreal Street. The concrete slabs that will top the girders to form the bases of the roadway are already in production, and we're likely to see the first of them arrive throughout April. As everyone involved will tell you, it's impossible not to mention how much the weather conditions have changed. Two weeks ago, conditions were freezing. Now it's practically shirt sleeves weather. We can follow the installation of the latest girders as they're moved onto the causeway on their transporters. Typically, they're taken beyond the intended spot for lift 
then reversed into position. The two lift cranes, Bridget and Frigid, have to move aside to allow passage, then they move back into position. Operators, using mechanical lifts, attach the two cables at each end. Unless, as happened here, the crane operator has exercised extraordinary skill in placing the hooks himself, earning a gesture and a bow from the lift operator. The lift of each girder is a tightly synchronised activity, with the cranes acting in concert to produce an even, steady movement. Failure to do this could result in the massive girder swinging dangerously. A good high lift is normal, with sideways displacement coming next, before the operators ease the girder gently towards the place where it will join its mate. Finally, and very precisely, with frequent checks, the last few centimetres of movement downwards are made, with ground guides watching all the way. Elsewhere on site, the preparation of the approach road on the east end has continued, with a lot of levelling and movement of base gravel to provide the right result. It's clear that the pace of change in the project is going to continue to be rapid, so these updates will be produced on the 14th and 28th of each month, unless there's an extraordinary achievement to be reported. If you've got questions about the video, or want to make suggestions about future coverage, please use the comments section below. Well, all right, that's it for March 2021. Going into April, and it's gonna be a busy period I can see already. So don't be an April fool. Look out for the next report on uh, April 14th. And if you like these uh, reports, please consider subscribing. But thanks for watching anyway. Bye from Kingston.